Good morning, everyone. Again, my name is Wes Lambert and Josh Kenju right here. And this talk is going to be about an integration with uh, Sublime Platform, which is a free and open platform for email security and leveraging that with Security Onion and, and how you might fit email into your visibility and uh, you know, detection stack. So without further ado, I'll go ahead and jump to the introduction slide here. And you can see uh, just some details here. You can find us on the internet here. Uh, myself and Josh, I've already, already um, you know, given a brief, Phil has already given a brief introduction of myself, but I'll let Josh, if you'd like to say anything else about yourself. Yeah, so super excited to be here. Prior to Sublime, my background is mostly in DOD offensive cyber space. So mostly doing offensive cyber things, also spent some time in the private industry doing similar types of offensive work. And also just kind of building, building software throughout that time. So it was kind of that experience that led me to, you know, starting Sublime and in this kind of approach that we're taking and, and ultimately to this badass integration that we got with Security Engine today. All right, thanks Josh. All right, so a little bit of background. Um, we're gonna talk about Sublime platform a little bit, just some background on, on what it is and how you might leverage it. And then we're gonna talk about some goals, um, you know, how we can leverage both of these platforms together and the integration itself. So first of all, uh, the state of the fish, talking about phishing today and email. Um, if you've used email lately, probably seen phishing attempts, obviously. Uh, email is still the number one initial access ve vector today for attacks. Um, it's super excellent for attackers, and um, unfortunately for defenders, it, it gives us quite a bit of grief and, and really a hard time uh, trying to defend our networks. Now, what we want to talk about today is, is a few goals, um, just making it easier, really, to defend against email-based attacks, reducing the number of incidents that we experience from these attacks, being able to improve our threat hunting capability, uh, through email or other data that supports uh, you know, artifacts in the email um, and things of that nature. And we really just want to get that context from having all these different layers of data and telemetry and be able to tie that all together and quickly uh, come to a resolution. Now I'll let Josh talk about Sublime here. Okay, so if I were to sum up what Sublime is, I'd say it's email security that's not a black box. So it's a, it's a free and open platform. You can, you can self-host it, you can run it with Docker, you can spin it up in a cloud. It's API-based, so it'll integrate with you know, Microsoft 365 or Google Workspace. Um, you can even ingest EMLs directly via API. And you know, ultimately, primary use case, blocking email-based attacks, BEC, credential phishing, malware, ransomware. The way that we do that, that's kind of unique, is using detection as code with a combination of of machine learning and AI. So those are two buzzwords that I kind of hated putting on this slide, but we'll actually talk more about that um, in, in a second. So this is not really like a new concept in security, G you know, giving users, giving security teams visibility and control over their stack. So we've seen this playbook kind of in, in many different areas of security. We've had it with logs, right? So you can write Sigma rules or EQL, network with Suricata and Snort. Sim has, has made a big, you know, Sim is big as well. Static analysis, binaries, you've got Yara. You haven't historically had anything for email that gives defenders control to do detection, to do prevention, to do threat hunting behaviorally. And that's really what Sublime is all about. So primary use case, just um, we're gonna just basically do like an overview of Sublime so you've got kind of a sense of what it is and then before getting to the actual integration. So primary use case, inbound email protection. This is kind of like the magic over here on the right side of the slide is all the detection is, is visible, right? So there's a, there's a DSL called message query language that leverages machine learning, that leverages the output of machine learning models and lets you basically take control. So over on the right, we've got a you know, pretty simple, straightforward detection for BEC attacks where a VIP or executive is being impersonated. We're looking for a VIP's display name in, um, on line three there, and then we're looking for the output of a machine learning model um, that's running natural language understanding, 
to classify this as BEC with high confidence. And then we're also doing some entity extraction or, and, and looking for a sense of urgency and, and a request. So this is all modifiable by you as the end user. You can, re you can write your own if you want to. Um, or you could not touch it at all. So our, our you know, detection ML teams, we maintain a core feed where you can just spin this up and it, and it just works and it solves these problems on the left side. So beyond inbound email protection, a lot of other interesting use cases that might be relevant to folks in this room. So you can do real behavioral threat hunting in email. You can operationalize threat intel. You can operationalize Yara SIGs. You can reduce attack surface so for like one of our most effective um, capabilities for attack surface reduction. Block new sender domains, right? Block new sender domains registered in the past three or seven days. Or block HTML attachments from first time senders, folks that you've never had any correspondence with. So these are types of things that are just resilient to attacker adaptation and, and a whole lot more. So just a quick, like a few quick notes around, you know, some of the, the ML components of the platform. So um, we integrate, we, we built our own NLU um, capability and it classifies the intent of messages. So, you know, it, and it basically takes a block of text and it classifies it um, and that text can come from anywhere basically. It can come from the body of the message, it can come from an OCR extraction from an attachment and then classify it. We've got a bunch of, you know, intents that, that are supported today including BEC, credential theft, um, callback phishing, extortion, a bunch of other things. Um, sentiment analysis and all that good stuff. Um, computer vision and, and logo detection, mac macro classification and, and, a, and a whole lot more. So some of the attack types supported um, that you might find interesting or if you've got a problem today that you want to address, this, it, this is basically a screenshot of the platform where you can filter by specific attack types that you might be interested in. BEC, fraud, callback phishing, cred phishing, extortion, malware, ransomware, and spam. And then we've, all, we've got all of these techniques, tactics and techniques broken down um, in, in terms of what you might actually want to verify that you've got coverage for. So one of the big things, you know, I noticed as an, as an attacker basically is like, um, you, you can obviously recycle techniques and as a defender, you don't really know verifiably what you have coverage for if it's just a black box, right? So this gives you that verifiability where you can dig down and say, yep, I've got coverage for lookalike domains, you know, or, or employee impersonations. And a bunch of, you know, detection methods here as well. So you can, you can filter by this in the platform and say, hey, I want to see what, you know, what we're doing for URLs. So I'm going to filter by URL analysis or file analysis. So super, super helpful there. QR codes. And um, another screenshot from the platform here, you've got granular control over the detections that you activate. So, you know, a lot of folks just activate them all and that works really well, but you, you can get granular and you can say, hey, I only want to activate, you know, I've, I've only got this one problem right now, so I'm only going to activate this one set of detections, right? And I'm only going to enforce auto remediation on those and, and maybe I'll just get alerts on the others. Behavioral threat hunting, so, you know, we're going beyond IOCs here and we're saying, all right, let's describe the behavior of an attack we're looking, we're looking for. Maybe we got some threat intel or, or, you know, maybe we got something from our tip or maybe we got, we received a report or we saw something on the internet and we want to know were we affected by that? Did we get that attack? And it's difficult if not impossible to do that today unless, uh, if you've got some IOCs maybe, but obviously attackers will rotate and, and they will, um, like the hashes might change, domains might change per organization, per, per campaign. So instead what we say is, all right, let's describe the behavior of this attack. Um, you obviously can't see that, but we're, what we're saying is in this example, um, we're looking for QR code phishing that's been big recently. So we're saying, all right, show me all inbound messages where there's an image attachment and send that image attachment to an attachment explosion engine, scan for QR codes, extract the QR code, and then run analysis on that. And at the same time, run the body of the, of the message through our natural language classifier and look for a sign of credential theft. And, and a few other things. So we can describe these attacks behaviorally and say, hey, did I receive this ever in my environment? 
And for the, for the people, for the folks that like to do like, you know, git ops or detection as code, you can, we've got this feature called feeds in the platform where you can point, you, you can basically just point the platform to a GitHub repo or, or any Git repo and it'll pull those detections into the platform so you can turn them on and, and start hunting or, or doing prevention on them. So public or private repos are supported. What this really enables is also, you know, beyond just kind of Git ops and, and detection as code is it enables peer-to-peer -peer sharing and automatic peer-to-peer -peer sharing. So if you've got, you know, you got one org here and one org here, today, you know, historically you've got to like send them, you know, some rule or something that you want to share or maybe some IOCs. Now you can just commit it up to a Git repo and it can get distributed peer-to-peer -to, -peer to everyone and operationalize automatically. So, and you've got, obviously you've got control over whether you want that turned on by default. And we've got some nice reporting and, and, and metrics and whatnot. So who's getting targeted, what types of attacks you're seeing, um, things like that. And um, prevention and alerting. So you, you, can, you can put this into prevention mode where we're you know, effectively blocking messages or we're inserting warning banners or you can keep it in an alert only mode. You know, Slack alerts, email alerts, hit a webhook, whatever. So a couple just quick kind of trending examples here. So, Anyone seen QR code phishing recently? Yeah. Okay. This has been, this has been pretty big recently. And this is just an example of how the platform can detect it. We, we actually just released a blog post kind of diving in to detection methodology and whatnot. But basically, high level, um, long story short, analyze the message for the Microsoft logo using computer vision. We've got a QR code scanner that'll actually decode the URL and then enable the platform to then go out and analyze the link. What's at the link? Is it credential phishing, et cetera? And another recent just kind of trending thing is callback phishing. So, um, you know, these are I think typically kind of perceived as low level, you know, low impact threats, but um, we actually just released a blog on this as well, I think last week where we describe that the, the actual impact of this can be, you know, pit pretty, pretty bad. So, um, just in terms of, you know, attacker intents and, and, and what they can actually achieve through this attack. So, um, similarly, you know, natural language sen sentiment analysis, computer vision, logo detection, all that kind of, kind of good stuff. All right. Let's talk All about right. integration. So now that you guys have an overview of what Sublime Platform is, let's talk a little bit of how we can integrate it with Security Onion and how it helps us. So one of the reasons that uh, I really wanted to look at Sublime Platform and in integrate it with Security Onion is bringing another layer of visibility from the detection perspective outside of our network that we may not have as much control over or that is a, a bit disparate from our network that we're monitoring, right? It's not within the conf confines of the network, uh, so it may be a little bit more difficult to manage and to uh, you know, gain visibility into. So this is why I want to talk about bringing email in alongside the network and endpoint telemetry that we have already. So with Security Onion, we have the network traffic that we're monitoring. We're monitoring the endpoints with Elastic Agent or something similar. And now we can also have email visibility and link that to our investigation and see if it affords us anything else to lend to our, lend to our investigations uh, to help us out and arrive at a solution faster. The components of this integration are going to be the alert pipeline. So we're gonna be bringing in alerts from Sublime Platform into Security Onion. So if there are flagged rules in Sublime Platform, we are polling and grabbing those. And I'll talk about that in just a second. Also, the ability to have a pivoting function from the email or the alert that was ingested over to Sublime, and then also observables, doing something with emails themselves, email files, and seeing what we can do with that. So this kind of starts a, I guess, a new type of integration with Security Onion. The way that this was developed, uh, it's actually directly in SOC that you modify this configuration so we're not going over to Elastic Fleet and modifying configuration there then going back in SOC and doing something else. It's all right here. You can see the Elastic integration right here. The different details for the Sublime platform integration. And so this is an optional integration that will 
uh, be included in the future, and this similar type of process will likely be followed where we have this configuration directly in SOC, and then we can just go from there. Super simple. And then we also have one for the SOC analyzer. I mentioned the observables, being able to take those raw EML files and to um, inspect those, right? So we're gonna be able to do that and configure it quickly and easily within the SOC interface. And then we'll see things like alerts, which I'll cover in just a minute in the demo. So you can see that we pulled this alert down from Sublime Platform. We've got various details, such as the email subject, uh, the reply at, read at, time, uh, and lots of other good stuff here. The SOC action allows for pivoting over to Sublime. So if we're looking at that alert and we wanna get more context into that particular uh, message group and get more details about the message, we can do that. And I'll get more into this into the demo, but I just wanted to include this on the slides in case somebody was not watching the presentation. So uh, you can, we, we can see the email observables here where we've gotten a result back from Sublime Platform. This is in the SOC analyzers. So if we're looking at a case and we're adding an email observable, we're able to see the result there inside of the, uh, the case there and have it attached to it. And this is where I'll start to demo this and actually show you how this works. Do you have any questions so far? Cool. Let's see if this will work. You can do a sublime piece first or after? Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. You took it with, hold on. <laughs> Forgot about that. All right, so before we do that, Josh is actually going to walk you through sublime, just a, a visual demonstration, and uh, we'll go from there. Sweet, so ju just in the interest of time, I'm just gonna stick to setup, just so you got a sense of like what that would look like to actually spin this up on your own. So um, what I'm actually gonna do is I'm just gonna show you how we got here. So over here, you can copy this curl command and literally spin this up. This will basically kick off a Docker deployment um, locally. Data stays local um, and you can do that. You can deploy directly to your AWS account. So you can literally hit this and, and do a couple clicks and then it'll be up and running in your AWS account. And then what we're looking at right now is our cloud um, managed platform. So that's just like how we got here and how you, can, how you can do the same. And once we've actually spun up the platform, if you're doing the Docker deployment, for example, it's up in like five minutes, five or 10 minutes, depending on your network bandwidth. Um, and so from there, all we do is we go over to message sources, and then I just wanna show you how easy this integration is to, to, like, to get mail flowing into the platform. So like we said before, it's Google Workspace or Microsoft 3, 365 API ingestion. So that's like the primary production use case. And you can also run this on your personal email. So if you want to just like, you know, screw around with it or, or even actually protect your personal email, we've got a lot of people doing that. You can ingest via API. So if you've got a trove of e EMLs sitting somewhere, like a local, you know, Postfix server or whatever, you can actually just ingest via the API. But I just want to show you how simple this is here to, to integrate. So we'll go over here. Please don't uh, hack me. So in cloud, you'll just have this permissions, a, a tenant admin authorizes, and, and, and that's it. So from there, the platform will then go and fetch mailboxes, fetch groups and everything like that. You'll be able to activate those mailboxes or you know, not activate anything and just be, you, you can do this like a phase rollout. Um, and then after that, it'll actually go and give you an option to go and ingest historical data, ingest and analyze historical data. So you can say, this is everything sitting in user mailboxes right now. And then you can kind of make decisions based off of that. Okay. All right, cool. Thanks, sir. All right, so now you've seen how easy it is to configure Sublime to start getting those emails in there and you know, evaluating them and, and checking them out. Let's talk about, or actually go through this demo here if I can get all the way down. 
Okay. All right. So this first part will be for the elastic integration. And what we do here is in the SOC administration page inside of 2.4, we'll click the configuration here and we'll look for the elastic leak configuration and we'll check the box there at the top to make sure, I'm sorry, the, the toggle there at the top to make sure that we enable everything. And then we can see the optional integration, Sublime Platform right here. And then we have the various details such as the API key, the poll limit, the base URL. Right now the base URL will default to platform.sublimesecurity.com. Uh, so, uh, so that you don't have to enter anything additional in there, just your API key. And then you can just go off and it'll start pulling that data down and processing those, uh, those alerts from Sublime. And so over here we can see what actually happens behind the scenes is an integration was added per fleet note that you specified. And what this means is that for the Elastic Agent policy, it's now configured directly from SALT, directly from SOC, no messing in the Elastic Fleet UI. This is just for a demonstration. You can see all the details there that were generated and some different variables that were populated from the configuration there. So at this point, we'll be looking every one minute and pulling down the last five minutes of alerts from Sublime Platform. And then we can go in and configure the SOC analyzer, which is fairly simple as well. We just go to the Sensoroni section and the analyzer is over here. And then once we expand that, you'll see the different details right here, and it's gonna be very similar to the Elastic integration, the API key, the base URL, again defaulting to the cloud-hosted version. So if you're running that version, all you have to do is input your API key, and then you're ready to go. And then there is also a default mailbox address there. You don't see it there, but uh, it is in the backend config, just the security and the mailbox name. And then if we go over to alerts now, Right away, we can see that we have this alert from Sublime Platform. And we can see that it's a link to an auto download of a suspicious file type. So that's kind of interesting. We'll look into that. All right, we'll just let it go here. Should be. All right, so we expand that. And we drill down and we'll see different details right here. So the first one being the recipient address. And then we'll also see when the email was created. We'll see if and when the email was forwarded, any recipients to which the email was forwarded, if the email was read, if a reply was, <laughs> was sent to the email. We can see the sender address as well. So some, some great details here right in the event, the subject of the email, lots of different stuff here. And then we can see the flagged rules over here as well. And then as we scroll down, I'm sorry, that was uh, just part of the message details, but the flagged rules below. And then we'll scroll down and we'll see some other details besides the flagged rules. So what we do with the alert is, we actually just take the first rule that fired and we use that for the name. And then you can review the rest of the flagged rules along with it in that section there for the flagged rules. And you can see the message group status. So if this has actually been reviewed or not inside of Sublime Platform. We can see if it's been recorded by any users, right? Uh, so all this information is really great to have uh, directly inside of Security Onion, right? Be able to automatically be alerted without having to necessarily immediately, you know, pivot to another platform, check the platform, and, and go do something else. Um, but now we have the capability to ingest this into Security Onion, and then we also have this option in SOC for this quick action, and it's called Sublime Platform Rule Review right now, but the name, name might change. We'll see, but we can pivot to Sublime Platform for the message group review. We can review different details about that message group. And real quick, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, a message group is gonna be uh, essentially, you know, one or more emails that share the same characteristics based on the uh, subject and based on the sender address and any other details you wanna share? Yeah, so we do some, um, we do some grouping of campaigns, so even if you've got multiple, let's say you got 100 people that receive the same message individually, like not on the same recipient line, we do some special sauce to actually group those campaigns together. So you'll see them all here, and then, um, and then you can take, take action on all of them at once. Um, you, can, you can remediate that whole camp campaign at once, yeah. Right, so, so again, you know, we're kind of 
condensing it so you're not getting a, you know, a bajillion alerts. And then we've got that where you can pivot right over to Sublime and check that out further. So this is the message detail pane right here. It might be a little difficult to see, but uh, what we're looking up at the top are the detection rules that match the message group. Okay, so we have uh, some different details available for each of these rules, right? So if we view the message contents right there, we'll be able to see why the rule matched, what the rule looks like. And so right here, we've actually pivoted to the rule itself and we can see all the different details about the rule. We'll just go back. All right, and then we can see the other rule as well. You know, if we wanted to uh, see the actual rule itself in here, what match, we can do that just by clicking that right there, that button. And then we can just scroll down through that. And we can get insights into different characteristics about the email. That's what this insights pane is really great for. For example, these free subdomain links, we identify that this belongs to a free subdomain. It's a first time sender. So that's something important. The sender domain matches no body domains. So there's nothing in the body of the email that actually matches the sender domain. And then we see some different things like the domains and the headers, right? Suspicious subject, right? It looks suspicious, kind of weird subject, right? So the subject here, urgent invoice due immediately. And this is the first time sender domain and it's also unsolicited. So we've got a lot of different, you know, different types of insights that we can gain immediately right off the bat, tons of context that we can gather. And if we go down here looking at this, we can see the message just as the user would. So it says click here to pay your invoice. Obviously, if you don't pay your invoice, they're gonna cut off your service, right? So we can see different types of views here that we can go through. Um, but then again, we'll just scroll up and then from here we can see the custom actions. So there are custom actions that you can take. You can, for example, forward these uh, to a webhook or or uh, you know, some other alerting service. And then we can also view the message history. So if the message was, or when the message was opened, if it was replied to, what time these different actions occurred. And we can also trash, quarantine, or dismiss the messages if we wish. Now in this case, we're not using it necessarily for uh, prevention, pre preventive pur no, purposes. Uh, this is more for detection purposes. But we wanna know if the user that this email was sent to actually click the link. So we're just gonna do a small investigation starting from the, um, excuse me, the email here. So what we've done is taken the domain here in the email and it's not suspicious at all, right? I mean, it doesn't actually tell us what is going on here. Right? I mean, but we're gonna group by these results here. And we see, we don't really get a whole lot available, right? There's a little bit for Zeke DNS and there's a little bit for Sysmon. We can click into the DNS real quick and take a look at that. And if we look at the first result here, we do see some activity, you know, DNS um, request basically. We see the query type name A, right? So we're, we're getting some answers back from here, right? It seems like something, sorry, let me pause that and go back. Nope, nope, nope. Okay, if I can get it well. Basically what it says, it's going a little fast now, but what it says is it seems like something happened, but you know, we're not quite sure um, you know, what else transpired here. We can see there was a DNS request, but we really don't have a whole lot of network traffic to go off of. It does appear that the user clicked the link, however, since we are getting this DNS activity. We can see the server IPs that were returned from the DNS query. And so we can look and see if we have anything else available for those. And so what that was saying again, it's going by kind of fast, but is there anything interesting with these particular IP addresses? So we'll search those very quickly. And here, this is where I could not copy and paste, but we'll copy and paste in here. And group by the event data set and see if we see anything interesting for that IP. Nothing too crazy, just a little bit of DNS, a little bit of con, but there's really nothing else from a traffic perspective that's very interesting. So we drill into the con traffic, look through it for a moment, and then we just take a look at the different details here, and then we wanna see if we can find anything from the 
network community ID. So if you remember the network community ID identifies traffic uh, that was in the same flow so we can see if there's any other traffic associated with it. We don't see anything. So we're not seeing a whole lot here for this particular address. So if we go back and grab the other IP address very quickly, go back to the A record, and grab the 172 address, and then instead of the other one, let's see if we get anything with this one. And it's about the same. Not really a whole lot there. So we really don't have a lot of visibility from the network perspective with this traffic. So with this particular attack, you know, if, if we're just monitoring with network and endpoint, it, it gets kind of difficult to really be alerted on or, or see anything that's happening. So we don't really see a whole lot here. So we need to scope it a little bit further. So what we're going to do here, instead of searching for these IP addresses, we're going to check out something else. We're going to see if this is the only particular address that this communication has occurred. And it looks like this is the only host that has interacted with this domain, at least in our data set here, that we have available to us. And so now what we're looking at is the event data sets associated with that particular IP. And maybe we'll look into the endpoint traffic since we didn't really see a whole lot else that was associated with the IP address. So we're just excluding the DNS and we're looking for anything interesting on the endpoint. All right, and now what we're doing here is we're just going to group by the file path. And right away we noticed something kind of weird. Okay, invoice.zip, wasn't that email about an invoice? Okay, we see some other files too. Now, let's drill in just a little bit to the invoice.zip, the endpoint event from Sysmon here. So, we have this endpoint event, but we don't necessarily have a whole lot of network traffic tying it to it or any other activity. Aside from the DNS request, oh, and shake and bake, what a great name. All right, so it's, we see in here that it's kind of hard to see, but it's in C users, shake and bake downloads, it's invoice.zip. Okay, so now we know that the user, we have a good you know, suspicion that the user did click the link in the email. We've seen network traffic to the associated IP address of the domain. And now we see that this file was dropped, invoice.zip, and if we remember before, the alert mentioned an auto download. And we see that it was Microsoft Edge that caused the creation of this here. So it appears as though the file was downloaded, but was it opened and executed? So we'll dive in just a little bit more. Just remove our query here or modify it. And we're just gonna sift, we could do a bunch of grouping, but honestly, we're just gonna look at a timeline more from the bottom up. You can see here that there's an event for MS Edge. So we're just looking at that, where a file was created. Okay, it's a temp file, maybe it was in the process of writing another file. Okay, so we'll look at another record for MS Edge. Okay, there we go, we see the invoice.zip, we see the zone identifier record, but you know, basically the same thing here, the invoice.zip being created, right, on disk, and then we see a process create after this of smart screen. Okay. And then if we continue, we see just a couple records up, PowerShell. Okay, let's pause for a minute. So, we see MS Edge, Zip Creation, Smart Screen, then PowerShell directly after. 
That's kind of strange. So we'll drill into the PowerShell event. And we see it's passing an encoded command, or the, at least the input to the command, right? So we'll copy that. And we also see that that was, well, as a parent of explorer.exe, so maybe they clicked something? So we'll pause here, and we'll say that the timing suggests a strong correlation between the downloading of the zip file and an encoded PowerShell command being run shortly thereafter, encouraged by explorer.exe. This is probably pretty bad, right? Let's see what actually happened. Okay, so we did see on the user's machine, invoice.zip was downloaded. The user clicked it, and in this case, I'd already entered the password, so there was no password to enter here for the decryption. And it went kind of fast there, but ultimately what we see here is an ISO inside of an encrypted zip, and inside of that ISO we see the invoice, right? Just an invoice, see the notepad icon. Now this is an LNK shortcut file, and then if we look at the properties here, we actually see the encoded PowerShell command. Okay. So yeah, it looks like something definitely happened here, but is this bad? How bad is this? So let's take it in the CyberChef and take a look. No, it's just us saying hi from Security Ending Conference 2023. <laughs> All right, so obviously this is not bad, but this could have been very bad, right? And so this is why, this is why you know, I talk about bringing email in. It's unlikely or, you know, it's, it's possible. It's, you could configure your rules to do this and, and whatnot, but is it, common probably in most scenarios that you're gonna detect this without this, be alerted to this, without the email aspect included? Probably not. So this case was a case of HTML smuggling using links. And what we see here, this is just a snippet of the code here of the HTML. You can see what actually handles the auto download of the file here. We define the blob and the data there, and then we give it a file name so that when the user clicks that link, the file is auto-downloaded to their desktop. All right, so in short, we have the email that arrived to the user, we have the link to the auto-downloaded file via HTML smuggling, and inside of that payload again was that LNK, inside of an ISO, inside of an encrypted zip, and on the user's desktop, and executed. Right, and so what I want to talk about next is the SOC analyzer. One other way that we can get good stuff by being integrated with Sublime Platform is using the SOC analyzer for Sublime Platform. Right here, I'm just creating a case and then I'm adding an observable to it. And just give me some time to write this title here, this comment. All right, so we're gonna add an observable, but this is a new type called EML, and it accepts a Base64 encoded email. We don't support files yet, but you can still add a Base64 encoded email. Add that in there. We'll go off and run that. And in just a few moments, we'll have a result from the Sublime Platform API attached directly to our case, so we can review that later and have it already associated. We don't need to tie that via any other means. And we see that it processed one record here, and we see that it was malicious. This email, in general, was also about HTML smuggling. So we can see lots of great stuff here, right? And that is all for the demo portion. get back to the slides here. Now, 
one thing to note is that obviously this is in detection mode. We could have prevented this attack by enabling the remediation feature in Sublime. However, you may not want to do that in every case, as Josh mentioned. Uh, you may want to do that in every case, or not in every case, but you know, every time for certain cases. Uh, it really depends. All right, so here's just a brief summary of the integration here. We can see the uh, SOC analyzer here where we can observe those EML files and send those to Sublime for analysis. And we also get those alerts generated from Sublime platform from those flagged messages, right? So it's super quick, super easy to configure. Some additional opportunities in the future, it might be nice to improve the parsing and extraction of the relevant fields from the Sublime results, from the alerts. Maybe hunting messages in Sublime and then searching for indicators in Security Onion, either through a manual or automated fashion. Importing EML files directly into Security Onion, similar to EVTX or PCAP imports. And then also the ability to dismiss or quarantine directly from Security Onion. So these, these are some things that we might look into in the future. So it might be uh, you know, nice to follow. And obviously, if there's any other feedback, uh, we'd love to hear that as well. And for now, I just want to leave you with, with a nice quote from Mr. T. You remember, don't you? You remember. You remember. Yeah, Pepper Charm remembers. All right. So again, with Security Onion, Security Onion and Sublime Platform, it's time to turn the tables on attackers, adding another layer of visibility into our current visibility, right? Having additional capability and context. That is what it's about, and turning the tables on attackers. Once again, thank you guys for attending. Yes. Oh, on. Yes. You have any questions or thoughts? Yes. Sure. You know, uh, so how does Sublime compare to uh, more commercial solutions like Proofpoint? Uh, I'd say it's Proofpoint if it weren't a black box. So I'd kind of summarize it. Okay. Yeah. Very cool. Thanks. Yep. Sir. Yeah, yeah, we push updates to our models at least monthly. Yeah. What's the uh, requirements for running? Like system requirements? Depends on the mail volume. So we've got, we've got a, a docs. Uh, in, in our docs, there's like system requirements depending on volume. So um, you can run, you know, if you're like five, 600 mailboxes, I think you could run this on like a, a like a fifty to a hundred dollar VPC, like super, it, not crazy. If you do use the AWS deployment, that's more substantial. That's that's what we actually recommend for production deployments. So if you want to do a self-managed production deployment, you should probably do AWS. Um, and then of course we've got the cloud managed version, which can you know handle any volume. Yeah. All right. Wait, we got one. Oh, we got one up there. Yep. A uh, li little bit. So we, we don't support direct upload of PST files, but we do have a, a CLI that I think can parse the EML, parse the messages out from it and then hit the API, but, but not natively is the, sh is the short answer. All right, thank you guys. One more. Oh, what? I can't see. Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah, that's a natural language understanding classifier that our team built, and uh, and and you can you can see on messages. Yeah. Uh, sorry, so the question was: Are you going to see it in real time? In the so w will they? Will the end user see it? Was that the question? Sorry. Uh, oh yeah. So are there like are we? Are we like sandboxing links and, and analyzing those and, and whatnot? Yeah, so we've got a link analysis capability that basically will go out to the links in a sandbox environment and um, it uses headless Chrome to do that and then it'll render the DOM, it'll take a screenshot, it'll see if any files are auto downloaded, it'll return those for further analysis, uh, run, some, run some like computer vision stuff on the credential phishing pages, things like that. All right, thank you guys.